I'd like to read an interesting excerpt from a book called Art and the Artist by Otto Rank uh, from a chapter called Beauty and Truth. Man's acceptance of his dependence on nature is honest, while freedom ideology, beyond a certain point, presumes the negation of that dependence and is therefore, also in a deeper sense, dishonest. This fundamental dishonesty toward nature then comes out as the consciousness of guilt, which we see active in every process of art, and which is not wholly absent from play. This feeling of guilt, of human hybris, of which the Greeks were the first to become conscious, also allows neither play nor the exercise of art to rise wholly from compulsion to freedom. The more strongly man feels his freedom and his independence, the more intense, on the other hand, is the consciousness of guilt, which appears in the individual, partly restrictive, partly creative, but in the community is accompanied by the gradual growth and formation of another ideology, that of truth, which acts paralyzingly on the freedom of the ideology of beauty. This scientific ideology, born of the feeling of guilt, therefore appears first in Greece, where the idea of artistic beauty also attained its greatest freedom. This is the profound reason for Plato's exclusion of artists from his ideal republic, for in their extreme type, the poet, he saw the truth-falsifying element which his scientific ideologism condemned as lying. Owing to this scientific guilt feeling in the Greeks, the only art ideology permitted to their philosophers was one that had to be content with the imitation of nature whereas their real works represent a much higher spiritual truth. And so the Greek identification of the true with the good and the beautiful appears as the effort of a man nervous of his likeness to God to reconcile the freedom ideology of art with the guilt ideology of science. But this latter also leads to hybris, since its overvaluation of the intellectual faculties of knowledge in man is only possible by the denial of his animal nature. The truth of the dependence of man on nature, which play and art deny, reappears out of this guilt feeling as the impulse to scientific knowledge. But art itself is influenced by it, so that we find it, when at its highest point, already infected by scientific ideas, and particularly with the laws of geometric proportion in architecture and sculpture, and of mathematics in music and meter. But far more important than these special influences, which in fact had already begun in the East, in Egypt and Babylon, is the general influence of the scientific idea of truth on the aesthetic idea of beauty. For it was not science that was born in Greece, but only the type of scientific man, just as Greece was the cradle, not of art, but of the artistic type.